today on Logan Lee Adventures. Hey guys, so the last 24 hours has been absolutely pure madness, pure hecticness, but I'm finally here in Hong Kong. This is the airport that we're in. Grab my baggage. I'm so happy to finally land in Hong Kong. Leaving Indonesia was hell. Because of an incoming storm, we couldn't take the fast ferry back to the mainland, so I had to take a slow boat, which took over 13 hours. At the end of the trip, I missed my flight, leaving Indonesia by an hour. My boyfriend helped me book another flight first thing in the morning because he had better internet reception than me in Japan, of course. And here he is. And happily, I am now here after sleeping in Bali's airport. I'm taking this cool train all the way from the airport all the way into Hong Kong Island. Alright, that was a very lovely train ride. I was talking with my boyfriend for a bit and enjoying the views together. Uh, he's actually on a train in Japan himself. And now we're at the station, so I'm just going to grab a taxi and head towards Andrew's place. Andrew, or Andy as I like to call him, we've been friends since our wild young days back when we used to live in South Africa. He's on holiday for most of the time I'm in Hong Kong. However, he amazingly is letting me crash at his apartment even though he's away. Hong Kong has been a place that has always intrigued me. Its culture has been intertwined with my childhood. My family, who are Vietnamese, we often went out to eat dim sum and other Hong Kong cuisine with my father usually conversing and ordering dishes in Cantonese. The autonomous territory has a clear distinct identity from the rest of China, but from what I know about Hong Kong, aside from the food I grew up eating, are through my friends' stories. It's a vibrant, pulsating city that is not only a major port of trading in Asia, but also a global financial hub. I'm ready to be submerged into what the Fragon Harbor is all about. Alright, so I've arrived at Andy's place, and this is the great cool living room. It's a really gracious space in mid-levels, which is the neighborhood in Hong Kong, a uh, neighborhood. It's like up in the hills that is kind of mid-level, so I guess that's where the name comes from. But it's a beautiful space, and my favorite part of this space is not the great lighting that I'm getting right now, but where it's coming from is this great view. We have like this chill spot where I'll read and have tea. And we come to a magnificent view of Hong Kong. And down here you can see the swimming pool and the tennis court as well. And the gym facilities. That's part of the building that I'm staying in and I'm just gonna relax in your living room for a little bit before heading out into the city and chill with this view are the mid-level escalators and they just run throughout the whole neighborhood or through the neighborhood and all the way up. It's very cool. Now just buy goes. I'm looking for a 7-Eleven to get this thing called an octopus car which is a transit car. It's kind of like the oyster card in London that I have but octopus. Like the escalators just keep on running all the way up. This is probably one of the best cities to get lost in and wander around on your own uh, or with friends or whoever because it's just so fun you don't know anything and your GPS doesn't really work. And there's just, when you look up, it's just all tall skyscrapers. But then it's just at night, all the colors are coming out of the city as well. It's so cool. I just saw this nondescript place outside that looks like it served noodles. Everything is in Cantonese, but I'm just gonna point to random things and attempt to order anyways. How can I tell that this place is good? No matter where in the world, if the locals are eating there, I'm gonna eat there too. This is what I got. Big noodles. Oyster mushrooms. Some type of tofu. See, there's pork as well. The broth is really nice. 
It's been a long time since I've just wandered the streets at night aimlessly. I used to do it when I was younger to clear my head, but in Hong Kong, it's different. It's to soak things up, to take in the big city, bright lights, flowing lanterns, double-decker buses, the blurry faces of people who passes by me. All 7.347 million of them leading their own lives in this tiny autonomous territory. I became a kid again, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed at something as simple as taking the metro and seeing how effortless and high quality it is, something that is miserably lacking in North America where I grew up. Hong Kong with its massive population and high density space is ironically efficient and organized. There's a flow here that just outbeats what I grew up with in Toronto. I even head to the heart of the madness, Mong Kok. Mong Kok is a neighborhood in Hong Kong that, on the weekend, is crammed with people, all in between a dizzying array of thriving market stalls, street food, and flashing neon lights. Yes, Hong Kong is central and Hong Kong Island, the posh part of the city where I'm staying, but it is very much so Kowloon as well, where the districts are bustling with its own different type of world. I end up in Temple Street Night Market, where numerous traders, street performers, and fortune tellers gather. Here, you can find traditional craftsmanship, as well buy lots of souvenirs, including antiques, jade, clothing, teaware, wear and electronic gadgets. You name it. And as far as street food goes, I know I just ate a huge bowl of noodles, but I traveled through my stomach. In Mong Kok, I found traditional as well as innovative Hong Kong style snacks, including fish balls, takiyaki, octopus balls, stinky tofu, milk tea, siu mai, and so much more that I can't even pronounce. Now on my way back from Kowloon, I'm at the edge of Victoria Harbor, where it straddles in between the peninsula. There's a reason Hong Kong has one of the most sought after skyline in the world. From here, my love affair with this city grows even deeper. Alright guys, so that was my first day in Hong Kong. So what you got from me for my first day was lots of really great views, lots of really great food. Really cheap, cheap food as well. Everything that you saw was under five dollars. Incredible. I was just in awe, you know, trying to cross the street with so many people. And then you hear where I'm just walking around Victoria Harbor, it's just so quiet and peaceful. And you view of all the city lights. This has only been the first 24 hours in Asia's world city. So give this video a like, leave me a comment, and subscribe because I'll be sharing with you more Hong Kong adventures in the next video.